Well, yeah. And, and first of all, for anyone who's listening to this, I highly recommend there's going to be a link in the description to, uh, to the Amazon link to get this book. I'm already, I mean, I've, I've taken so many notes and I've got stickies like I've, I've been consuming and I went to the Lego store and unfortunately all the kits for these are like back ordered. Yeah. <laughs> um, but either way, like I, I'm so deep into it. I think if anything, um, talk a little bit more about serious play because you are solving very high level problems. I mean, you're not even, you're not just doing this for companies. I mean, you're doing this. I, I saw you just facilitated a workshop for like an energy, um, some, some sort of government entity that's dealing with energy management. That's I mean, right. you're solving very high level technical problems. So why Google and how do or um, why, why Lego and, and how do you do this with, uh, with Lego? Uh, you know, talk about like kind of the, cause sure. you mentioned here in, in some of these fundamentals, like the three modes of communication and getting people to start operating in that way. Yeah. And, um, talk a little bit about that and some of the build levels too, because yeah. I think the people that are listening to this, some of them want to be facilitators. A lot of them do strategy in their own way, shape or form. So how could they, why should they consider incorporating Lego serious play into their, uh, into their practice? Yeah, I mean, a ton of great questions there. I'll start with a really um, kind of basic level. So in most meetings, the primary mode of communication is auditory. Somebody has a thought, they convert that thought with varying degrees of success into language, and they will try to communicate the idea that they've had in their mind. Um, maybe people are listening, but we know in meetings often people aren't listening very deeply or maybe not even listening at all. And that's kind of the primary mode of communication. When people build Lego models of ideas, um, they can direct the listener's attention to the model to try to describe the ideas. And so by kind of having a model and by talking about it and articulating it, we're able to use three modes of communication, auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. And that does two things. The big benefit is for the listener. The listener actually has something to do with their attention. They can direct their attention far more clearly on what's being said. So this was a little model built in the workshop with the high pressure gas pipeline energy company that you mentioned earlier. And it was a model built by a participant who talked about a positive behavior of supporting each other. And it's a beautifully simple little model of somebody at the back supporting to other people who are sort of feeling a bit overwhelmed. And you can see that that idea by me using the model and talking about it becomes a slightly sort of stickier idea. People are better able to remember. So I describe Lego serious play as being like an enhanced mode of communication. Another analogy sometimes I make is it's a bit like making a 3D print of your own thoughts. And because thoughts are invisible, if we can give form to those thoughts, it allows the listener to ask questions about those thoughts. So for instance, the questioner could say, well, is there any significance to the fact that you've used a green base plate? Or, you know, why is this character wearing a, a red jacket or got sort of dark trousers on? And for the, 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 the model builder, there will be one of two things that will happen. Either I could say there's absolutely no significance to the fact that he's wearing a red shirt. Or having been asked the question, I, that might trigger a layer of meaning inside my own thought that I hadn't originally seen. And I might be able to attribute more layers of meaning to the thought that I've just kind of visualized. So that's kind of another way of thinking of it. So at its very basic level, when people build individual models, it is um, done properly, an enhanced mode of communication. So that's kind of build level one. In the book, we talk about three build levels. Build level two is when people who have built individual models, let's say of an organizational vision, are able to take their shared, their, their shared ideas and build a physically shared model. Now, most people in your podcast will have been in a meeting where at some point, Somebody has talked about a vision or a strategy and people have discussed it and written things down on post-it notes. And, and eventually somebody tries to synthesize all of those different ideas into a sentence on a whiteboard or a flip chart. And the problem of that sentence is it might mean very different things to different people. 
If, however, we build a shared model, um, Lego model of a vision, what we can then do is ask each of the participants to tell the story of the model. So actually what we begin to do is not interrogate, um, we interrogate the meaning. So for instance, mm -hmm. let me tell you, give you an example. A couple of years ago, I was running a workshop and somebody built on a shared model, they put a, a tree, a green tree. And the first person who told the story of the model said, this tree is symbolic of being environmentally sustainable. Environmental sustainability are a core set of values for us. The next person who told the story of the model pointed to the tree and she said, this tree is a bit like a Christmas tree and it's symbolic of Christian values because those are important to us. Wow, those are two very different meanings. But what we're able to do is say, okay, fantastic. Now let's have a conversation. Is our vision contingent upon being environmentally sustainable? Are Christian values important? Is it neither or is it both? Do you see what I mean? So mm -hmm. even something as simple as a little tree enables a conversation about, well, what do we mean by this shared vision? So that's kind of build level two, very briefly. It helped, it's much more powerful than words only in helping people develop shared meaning. Build level three is another whole, whole shooting match. When we uh, help people build system models, imagine there's a picture in the book, um, I haven't put a copy in front of me actually, but there's um, a picture in the book of a, a big system model. What we're able to do is understand, um, let's say things like organizational visions in a wider uh, context. So for instance, a client I'm currently working with built um, a vision of their organization. And I asked them to build models of agents, factors that would impact their vision or be impacted by their vision. And in that workshop, we wound up building 44 different agents, everything from internal management conflict to the United Nations, to the board of directors, to um, hackers and pirates. Uh, so a very, very wide range, 44 different things that would influence their vision. And then using a special set of Lego bricks, we're able to look at the connections between these agents and the vision. Now here's where the real magic happens. What you can do is then run a set of scenarios. You can say, well, let's imagine a scenario, something that is likely to happen. You can physically look at the impact of that scenario on the system model. And by physically moving the model around, which is connected to other models, you can see a whole set of unintended system consequences. So Lego Series Play at Build Level 3 is an incredibly powerful tool for exploring and understanding unintended consequences of decisions. So it's, it's, it's really, really magic. Um, it's difficult to do, it's difficult to facilitate. It takes at least two or three days uh, before you can do that in terms of time because you've got to build a vision, you've got to build the agents, you've got to build the connections. Then when you have the system model, you mm -hmm. can run this process which sometimes we refer to as real-time strategy. I've been talking a lot. Maybe I'll take a breath. And <laughs> no, this is, no, I mean, this is fantastic. This is why I want, I mean, people hear me on the show all the time. So it's great to, to, to have you on because like, like I said, I'm just, uh, I'm really blown away. This to me, this is like, wow, why didn't I hear about, like you said, I wish I would have learned about this three years ago. Yeah, um, and, and it's really just, um, I think that, our goal really, and my goal always as a strategist or as a facilitator is to help solve problems. I'm, I'm less of an order taker these days. Like my old agency, we used to just take orders and now we're more problem solvers mm -hmm. than order takers. And, and uh, I think that's kind of the natural evolution of creatives. I think that creatives should be solving problems. And if there are enhanced ways to, uh, to communicate with your audience uh, or with your customers, uh, then you should be exploring those. So, um, no, I mean, I think this is great. What would you recommend? Because I mean, I'm surfing online right now. I'm trying to find like the best way to get started. And I will tell you that, uh, Camila, Camila, uh, is here in Arizona. I've been hitting her up on Twitter. I'm like, Hey, come on, let's connect. I know she's yeah. getting her PhD. But what would you recommend, um, to somebody who's trying to get started? Like I'm pretty green. I'm reading the book. I don't have my kits. You know, I don't have the kits yet cause they're all back ordered. Um, where does somebody like me start? It's a really great question. And I think the answer is not as straightforward as I hope it will be in the future. Um, so I'll just start with the book series work. Um, we wrote the book 
to try to help further legitimize the tool. And it's a very practical book. Um, it focuses on build level one, and we give five case studies in the book to try to help people um, use those as kind of maps for their own facilitation interventions. So um, you don't need to use the official um, kits and bricks. If you've got kids, you could raid your, your kids, you know, part of bricks in, in your bedroom, um, or you could just buy some bricks from eBay. Um, and you could try some of the basic exercises. So the first case study is a goal setting case study. It's pretty low risk. In fact, I saw on Twitter, you, you tried to build a model of the kind of leadership that you admire, you know, and you built a beautifully simple model in about three or four bricks, I think it was, which mm -hmm. described very powerfully the kind of leader that got the best out of you. So the book is intended to help people who are already confident in these kinds of processes to take a few kind of baby steps. Um, so that's kind of the first thing that people could do. I think that learning, being trained to facilitate is a really good idea. Um, and there are a few organizations that do that. The um, training of Lego Serious Play facilitation is a, is a, a, a maturing and growing world at the moment. There are a couple of organizations that are run by people that used to work at Lego. One is called the Association of Master Trainers. And it's a small group of people who, who run a four-day training program. Um, they, um, they do run um, uh, uh, training in the States. So if you went to their website, you could, um, if you Google uh, Association of Master Trainers, you could find them. There's another group um, of people who also used to work at Lego. Um, Jacqueline, um, what's her name? Jacqueline Myerson, no, Denise Myerson and Jacqueline Lloyd-Smith. They do some training, I think, out of Canada. Um, that is a four-day training program. It's the one that I did. Um, and there are some good things about that training program and some things which I think could be improved about it. What you do in the course of those four days is you have a fairly didactic, i.e. a fairly taught experience. The teacher will facilitate the group through a whole set of different exercises. And what you get from that program is a very good experience of what it is like to be facilitated. What you don't get is much experience of what it is like to facilitate. And I think that I noticed when I finished my training, I was very, very nervous before my first assignments because I went from being a participant to now having to be a facilitator. And I hadn't had much time to practice that. So I think those courses suit people who are able to take um, theoretical and experiential input and convert it into their own practice. For people who learn best by doing, I think that the market needs, and Marco and I are developing, a training offer which um, is more practice-based. So it will give participants both the theoretical experience and the experience of what it is like to be a participant, but more importantly, it gives the, the trainee moments to facilitate some of the techniques. So I think that that's the gap. The other kind of slight tension I would say within the traditional four day training course is days one and two focus on build level one and two, which are both hugely powerful and you can do an awful lot with, and days three and four focus on system level builds. And I think that the system level build taught in a classroom that way is a little abstract. Um, it's probably best to teach system level builds on live projects. I mm. think that it, it's a very complicated um, practice. And I think that there are some people, maybe people who are younger or people who sort of have had less um, experience in, in, let's call it consulting like, like you and I have, who are given a set of techniques but would find it very difficult to, to manage those techniques with a mature, grown-up, adult, you know, serious group of people because it requires a whole set of other skills underneath it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there are three ways of, of starting. You know, get some bricks from eBay, um, try some of the exercises in the book um, in low-risk environments with sort of, you know, friends and associates and colleagues. I mean, one other thing which we did here in London was we set up something called the Meetup Group. So, you know, meet the Meetup platform. 
Mm -hmm. um, and we run little meetups here in London, and they happen all over the world, where we, we introduce people to some of the very basic mechanisms. Um, if people are, are serious, then one uh, market offer which is available is through the Association of Master Trainers or Jacqueline's organization or Denise's organization. And in time, um, um, depending upon how busy we are, we might develop a third offer, which is the more practice-based um, offer. And we would split that across build level one, build level two, and try to teach build level three on live projects, not in the classroom. Wow. Well, <clears throat> this is really exciting. Um, I, I, any, how can people reach you if they want to reach you or kind of learn more about what you're doing? Obviously, I'll put the link to serious work in there, but uh, how can people reach out to you? Um, well, I mean, we connected through Twitter. So, um, yeah. and it's, you know, isn't it lovely how two people who paths crossed us through Twitter. So that's always a good way to get a conversation started. Um, or they could just email me um, and you can put any contact details you like. on. on Perfect. I'll put, I'll put your Twitter handle in there. Well, um, as far as this interview goes, thank you so much. Let's stay on and we'll talk a little bit afterwards, but thank you so much for, uh, for agreeing to, to come on and anyone who's listening um, and who is doing facilitation to any degree, um, do a little bit of research. I would start by getting this book. Um, it's a beautiful book. Like you guys actually did a great job. I mean, even just the feel and the images, it's full color. It's, you know, it's, it's nicely designed. Frameworks are easily laid out in here. Um, I mean, I've, I've gone through the book three times already and there's so much information. I'm just like taking notes and, and, uh, again, I'm totally fascinated. So you have me sold and, uh, you've got a fan for life, uh, over here out of me. So thank you again, Sean, for, for coming on. Well, thank you, Aaron, for, for inviting me to, to the interview. It's been, been lovely. I'll hit stop on this now and Perfect. we can keep talking. Okay.